Hey everybody, welcome to the NEPA Scene Podcast, the only live streaming in-person arts and entertainment podcast covering Northeastern Pennsylvania, offering a true alternative voice in local media. We're coming to you from the NEPA Scene Studio underneath Center City Print in downtown Scranton. I'm Rich Howells, the founder and editor of NEPA Scene, and tonight we're here with Scranton Art House General Manager Noel Snyder and Front and Back Manager and Projectionist Ty Snyder. We're going to talk about their upcoming grand opening weekend, what goes into operating an independent theater and how they stand out from other local theaters, their bright new marquee and the city's zoning issue that sparked a lively public discussion this week, uh, keeping movie theaters alive in the age of streaming, and much, much more. So please stay tuned for the full hour. We would love to hear from you guys down in the comments below. You guys have been very active all day (laughs) in those comments. Uh, about uh, the marquee issue and that sort of thing. So let's, you know, maybe keep that going in the live stream tonight. We are going to touch on it, but we also have lots of other stuff to cover about uh, the movie theater business and all that kind of stuff and and running an independent theater. We want to learn all those kinds of things. So make sure uh, you leave those down below and uh, go and check these guys out. They, they're, they are already open technically, so you can go see a movie uh, as soon as this, uh, as soon as tomorrow if you want. Uh, Before we dive in, I want to thank our sponsor, Center City Print, who's provided the studio space for us. You can use promo code NEPACene in person or online at centercityprint.com for 10% off. Center City Print can bring your ideas to life in three locations, Scranton, Kingston, and Hazleton. These one-stop shops are locally owned and operated offering high quality printed products, copy and custom print services, and design solutions to help you, your small business, your nonprofit, your band, your photography, your art project, or any venture thrive. Visit them now at centercityprint.com and use promo code NEPACene online or in person for 10% off. I also have one other uh, sponsor that we want to uh, mention tonight too. Uh, we want to show off our new feature ink of the week. Uh, I want to thank uh, Electric City Tattoo, also in downtown Scranton, for being the first tattoo shop in the area to participate. Uh, this week's piece, as you can see on the screen, is by Bob Shock. And just a reminder that the annual Electric City Tattoo Convention is coming up April 12th through 14th at the Hilton in Scranton. So uh, whether you stop in the shop or the convention, you can get your next tattoo at uh, Electric City. And uh, this is going to be a new weekly feature. You're going to see it on our website. You're going to see it across our social media. Every week we'll have a different tattoo that's chosen by the tattoo artists at these shops. So uh, thanks again to uh, Electric City Tattoo uh, for uh, sponsoring uh, tonight's show. All right. Can you uh, give us a little background on maybe what you did before uh, you got into the movie theater? This wasn't something you've always done. No, I was in PR and marketing for the past 30 years. I worked at CMC for 11 years as the PR marketing coordinator. And then Geisinger took over for six years. I was there with Geisinger. And then I went to Keystone Community Resources, and I was um, PR and marketing there as well. Okay. So that's a that's a that's definitely a big career change. Yeah, and it was, well, I always did like corporate event planning. Mm. So when I was asked to take this position, I said as long as I could do events. Okay. So we have to figure out how to do events in the theater. And so <laughs> I did. That's what I've been doing over the past year is figuring that out. Okay. So while we were closed, I started in February of last year, and I was closed till July. And I had um, the Chamber Gala. Mm. I did that, 250 people. We transformed the whole place, shut it down, and I had six bars, and I had six food presentations, and we actually wow. shot the awards from one theater, and it was piped into the other theaters. Mm. So it was pretty amazing. So we were able to do that. It was the biggest, the first event I ever had and the biggest, so I feel like I could tackle anything after that one. Okay. <laughs> but I've been doing like fundraisers, uh, Marley's Mission, we did that in the theater, and do birthday parties, 60th birthday parties. I'm going to be doing a grease night. Somebody wants to do a grease night, they're going to dress up in a grease characters and nice. watch the movie. And we've done a lot of different things. Mm. So I'm willing to try anything. <laughs> Pro- probably yeah. a, a little less uh, clean up than a Rocky Horror night. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, but I was never a general manager and I never ran 
bar and I never ran a um, movie theater and I never ran a restaurant. Okay. So it's been an experience. <laughs> <laughs> a very a learning curve. I bet because you guys kind of had like a soft opening towards the end of last year, right? So I you... opened July tenth. Okay. So we wanted to wait for the marquee, mm -hmm. but the marquee is custom made, so it took um, Billy Thornton did it, and um, it was created by our marketing coordinator. I have a marketing director, so um, and and Jen of course. So he had to custom build it. So it took a little bit longer than we expected. So a lot was going out, nothing was coming in, and I said, why don't we open July 10th and let's start getting some revenue in here, and plus it'll teach and let me learn what, right. we're gonna, what we have to do to make the place better. So that's kind of what we did. I have a great team. I hired 25 people. Um, I have my son, Ty, um, who's in school to be a pastry and baking chef. He's been working at Lynn Sandy's for, since he's 15 years old. Oh, that's so, great. We, uh, we get all our birthday cakes at Lynn Sandy's. Yeah. So. <laughs> so he had experience with food and um, cooking. So he came on. He wasn't supposed to. I promised him I wouldn't say <laughs> I wasn't supposed to be here at all. This is like a situation. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> but he just, like, started What, what else help. is family for, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he just started helping, and the more he helped, and the more I felt like um, I was a good fit for him. Okay. So, yeah. So he came aboard with me, and um, and it's been great. And he is also the projectionist. We didn't mean to do that either. <laughs> but he was, like, we got five of us got trained. They came in from, do you remember where the, he was from? They were from Virginia. Yeah. Mm. So he came in and installed the new equipment, the software, because everything is computerized. The movies are all computer done, generated, they're e-delivered, mm. and they go to one scheduling system, and then it goes into a computer system that then he schedules and downloads the trailers the, and the advertisements, and then he shoots it to the projectors, all computer generated. Mm. So we all got trained. There were five of us. Now, I took the notes. Everybody listen. This is the thing. When she's explaining that, it sounds really simple. Right. It is not that easy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but there's so many moving parts. I have to like make sure trailers are within the right like restriction because okay. I can't have a rated R trailer with a PG. Oh movie. right, yeah. Geez. Like there's there's so many <laughs> restrictions that go into it. So I have to watch all the trailers and I have to make sure it fits because you're not gonna put like. A PG thirteen movie that's more adultish with a kids movie. It's it's right. It's not gonna work. It's not that demographic you want. Mm. And I have like there's so many problems that we didn't expect in the <laughs> beginning. Um, main thing being there's no training. Like uh, okay. like See. there was a training. Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. We got twenty <laughs> minutes. Yeah, it was twenty minutes. I don't think he was from Virginia. He was from like. He was further Midwest, away. Yeah. And so his plane was leaving. He had 20 minutes after he did the install for two days to teach us. So I took the notes, and everyone listened. And at the end of it, when he said he was done, I was like, I have the notes. And my other son, Tanner, was like, I, it's kind of like my audio programs. I kind of get that a little bit. And my other son, IT specialist, he was like, ah, I kind of got it. And then my husband was like, uh, I don't know. And then, <laughs> I'm not sure. I got some of it. And this one was like, I got it. He was like, I got it. Yeah. And I was like, you got it? I was like, all right, here's my notes. <laughs> and that's really and that was it. She washed her hands of it and she said, you could do this. Now. <laughs> I said, now you learn and then train us all. Okay. And so that's kind of, he's still learning. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's been, what? eight months since we opened mm. and I still don't even have everything down. Even today we had problems. Mm. The the new Kong versus Godzilla movie came out. I didn't download it. And oh, there was okay. showtime. <laughs> so I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh my God, this is gonna take thirty minutes to download. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And I have people coming in five minutes. Yeah, and How is like, this gonna work? <laughs> <laughs> he flipped out. I said do what you have to do and I took you know, I took care of the people and we got it switched and changed the good thing about having an independent movie theater like if people come in and they they want a movie at a certain time mm. or they don't like what we have they might have kids or whatever well, he can look at that schedule and be like you know what i can get this in another theater just give me like 20 minutes 
Oh, okay. And then we could flip it to another theater within reason, and then we can start selling it from there. Oh, and we've done that. Like, you can't do that at, at the bigger chains. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> There's no customization um, at all. But, yeah, so that's how he, because he was supposed to be in the kitchen. Mm. And, um... Yeah, I was supposed to be there full time. And, like, just cooking all the food, creating all the recipes. And... I started getting involved with these projectors and these projectors aren't easy as well. And I got involved and I got involved and I'm like, wait a second, I'm supposed to be cooking. Like, how am I going to do both of these? Because I can only stretch myself so thin. Sure. Mm-hmm. So and he's I'm, in school full time. Yes, I'm time. also okay. a full time college student <laughs> and I work full time. <laughs> yeah. So he, um, he works it out. He has a little like lounge area upstairs that he can crash and he between classes right go to the theater and do stuff oh so that's nice we've been, and we're closed on mondays we get one day off so one day it's yeah. the best day ever <laughs> yeah. so who would think you'd look forward to mondays yeah. right? i know it's crazy <laughs> but he's slowly training tanner and others to do it and eventually you know and he's still in the kitchen he mm-hmm. still oversees everything so mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody always tells me, oh my gosh, he's so amazing. How old is he? Like, the people that work for us are like, I want to grow up and be Thai. And I'm like, he's 18. <laughs> you're, a girl, you're older than him. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a little late for that. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. I, well, I, the food that I've seen come out looks amazing. Yeah. It looks yeah. way better than you would see at a chain theater, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of our biggest assets, I think, is our kitchen. Like, you mm-hmm. can't go to to Cinemark or Regal and have Smash Burgers delivered <laughs> to your seat. Like, right. it doesn't work like that in this area. And I think that's why we're so special. Yeah. Mm. And we have a really good menu. We have a menu that people are looking, you know, the stuff they want to eat. We have, um, you know, full sandwiches. We've been testing things off and on. And, and we have, like, snack food because people want junk food as well. But we're actually even going to take it to the next level as we move forward. We're going to have a little bit more like um, higher end with maybe small plates. Mm. So we're going to grow. It's, you know, we're test marketing everything. And that's what I did for the past seven months. And then because when I have my events, I have high end food. Mm. Like, you know, when I did the chamber, we had um, uh, steak and shrimp kebabs. So I have um, an executive chef on staff and I have two pastry chefs. I have um, a pastry chef, and then I have, she actually has a business degree and a pastry chef. And then I have Ty, who's worked at Lynn Sandy's, Sandy's forever. And then I have amazing line cooks as well. So we really, I, I have a great team. Even like my concession people, my bartenders, even the bar, we're going to be like expanding it. Like right now we have wine, beer, and mixed drinks, but we're working on like a five-page menu. And we're going to do mocktails, and we're going to do like house cocktails and so we're growing we're going to grow with you know as we move forward and we're going to see what people want it's it's interesting to see how theaters have changed over the years and how like you know going as a kid it was you know it was, it was popcorn soda and candy and that was it mm-hmm. and uh you know the seats weren't always the most comfortable and they weren't always maybe positioned the right way and now it's been like this arms race the last few years especially uh, post COVID to, uh, have these huge recliners with, uh, you know, bit, bit, lots of space and, uh, you know, food delivered to your, uh, to your seat and all this kind of stuff. Like it's crazy how much the business has changed. And then like, it also forces all the other theaters to kind of have to do with it. Like as soon as Cinemark saw Regal doing that, then they had to do it too. And like mm-hmm. everybody kind of followed suit. So, I mean, you guys, you were coming into this, where uh, the theater had already, it had been a movie theater before. I remember it being a movie theater many years ago. Mm -hmm. And then the last few years, it had a couple different owner or a couple different like managers, things Mm -hmm. like that, uh, that were all kind of out of town stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you guys are really the the the, the first ones that are are doing this locally. That right. you guys have a you know local staff, a, a, you know local owners doing this, right. uh, putting it together. So like coming into this, um, were there changes you had to make? Were there like renovations you had to do? Were there like uh, certain ways of doing things you had to change? So um, our owners has had it since 2016, mm. and he renovated it. 
okay. based on the chains that came in there at least. So whatever they required or needed, he kind of worked with them. And I think he might have renovated it twice for mm -hmm. two different cinemas. Mm -hmm. But when they would come in, they never got involved in the community. Right. They would open and it would be a big splash. And then, you know. Because they think fizzle. they would just be like the bigger theaters in this area, like, like Cinemark so and Regal. you don't have to do right. anything. Right, they're like open, here, yeah, so people open, are going to yeah. show up. But you can't do that. Right. <laughs> right. So then, the, I think it was two different separate ones, and it didn't, it, you know, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And then, and the leases would end. And so he decided, um, right before COVID, let's renovate again. Let's get it, you know, look, have the best reclining. Let's make it look really nice, cool, industrial looking. Let's try it one more time, and I'm going to do it myself. We're going to have a management team, and I'm going to try it myself, and we're going to work with the local community. So they did that. He got a great chef. Gino, part of my menu that I have now was part of his menu. And um, they opened, and I believe they were they closed March of 2019. They were like 2020. Open, oh, 2020? Yeah, yeah. they closed they, March They 20... opened the 19th. Yeah, they yeah. opened. They were only open for like, for like nine or nine, ten, ten months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was yeah. incredibly and short. The, yeah, time. and yeah. then COVID shut them down. They mm. were just getting going, and COVID shut them down, and um, and it closed. I think I think it was closed for two years. Mm. Like, and then he decided, like, well, I have this theater. What am I gonna do? Are we gonna open it again? Let's try it one more time. <laughs> so, um, and then that's when he was trying to find somebody to open it, and that's how I, and you know, I came in. Mm. And uh, I said, let's try it. We'll see what happens. <laughs> you know, I wasn't looking for anything. It just actually landed in my lap. And I said, all right, let's, I'll do it. If I'm going to do it, I want to do it now. I, I and get, it was like within two or three weeks. I give you credit because that's not yeah. everybody's going to look at that. Like, as I, like... I did have a really decent job. I had like eight weeks vacation. Mm. I, you know, I had weekends off. I work days. I actually work from home because of COVID. Mm. So, and now I'm six days a week, <laughs> second shift. Yeah. But I love it. Mm. I can't explain it. Like, it's so, it's a, we spend so much time there. Yeah. That it doesn't even feel like work anymore. Yeah. It's really mm. weird because when you spend 14 hours a day in a place, you, mm -hmm. you, we spend more time there than we do at our actual house. <laughs> so, actually, like, that's like our house yeah, now. <laughs> I actually go in early. Mm. You know, it's, and, you know, and it, before I have to, you know, because I want to get ahead of things. Sure. You know, and like I said, and when I hired my staff, I was like, you know, I need everybody to work hard, but I want to have a happy entertainment environment. You know, I, I worked in medical and I, you know, I worked with people with autism, which was amazing. But I just wanted it to be happy. Yeah. So I'm like, we're all going to get along. We're going to be happy. And we're going to have fun while we're doing it. So, and I think, like, the group of people that we have all feel the same way. And they're all, a lot of them are committed. Like, they're with me. Like, they've been with me. They saw us set it up. Mm. They're invested. Like, yeah. you don't know, when we have, like, last Saturday, we had, like, 288 people. It was a really busy night. Wow. We were booking and doing it, and we were so happy. Like when it was over, it was like that was amazing. Hmm. And like then Barbie came out when I opened, <laughs> I opened three weeks, and Barbie came out, we and I had no them, clue. Man. I had no clue what that meant. Hmm. I went from thirty-five people to two hundred. And, wow. and, and one yeah, week. It literally, we opened the next week. Barbie happened in yeah. Oppenheimer. Hmm. Like, you would literally see, like, 20 people. Like, we would look at our reports and be, like, 20 people. And we're like, okay, like, this is good. We're working up, like, 40. Like, that was crazy to us. Yeah. And then yeah. the following week, it was, like, the busiest day was, like, 306 yeah. people. And we're like, us? Yeah. And we, there like, was only 10 of us, too. We only had 10 employees yeah, at, that at that time. Yeah, at that time. Oh, shit. I mean, there was one night I cried, like, twice. And he was like, he cried in the walk-in closet. But, in the walk-in cooler. But. We got through it. it. Like we got through it. Barbie was Barbie was tough, and then we got Taylor Swift for fifteen weeks. Okay. So that kind of boosted it, mm. you know. But the movies themselves were a little slow. But now, like I have this amazing broker who lives in Texas who helps me get my movies. I have, you know, we have our 
contracts with all the studios, but I, I have someone that actually has been with me since day one. He actually uh, consulted with me and like kind of taught me the business. Hmm. And um, he like, he's been helping us and he said that I have not seen nothing yet because the blockbusters that are coming out this summer are going to be amazing. And we saw that with Ghostbusters. Yeah. It was crazy. And it still is. There's... A lot of people yeah. still nice. to see it. So instead of like when you go to work and you're like, oh, I have to work. Like my staff comes in and is like, oh, I hope a lot of people come today. And then mm -hmm. when it's over, we're like, oh, yeah, that was so much fun. Yeah. It's not, you know, and we're like waiting. We're like waiting for the people to walk through the door. We're ready. <laughs> we're all ready. Well, you know what? I, 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 there's, I worked for a lot of big corporations over the years uh, before I started doing any PA scene, you know, a lot of retail stuff and things like that. And a lot of it was always entertainment adjacent or mm -hmm. related to, uh, you know, uh, concerts or movies or some kind of entertainment. Uh, is, that's just where my interests were. And the, the crazy thing about it was it was always like, why is everybody so freaking miserable? Why can't we just like we're in the entertainment business? Why are we not having fun? Why are we not enjoying yes. ourselves? Like yeah. that should be part of this whole thing. Exactly. And then like whenever you showed a little bit of personality, it was immediately like, well, that's against the rules and that's yeah. not the way that things are done here and whatever. And it's like, yeah, but uh, then why are we in this business? That's the you one know? thing I say. The entertainment industry, there are no rules. Right. Like you let like you be yourself and you welcome everybody mm -hmm. and i just i don't like negativity in a workspace like mm -hmm. everybody should be happy because mm -hmm. if someone is negative within it could just be one person mm -hmm. it brings everybody down for sure so why would yeah. you have that one person that could overall like affect your entire business mm -hmm. yeah cuz then people will get the feeling that they're not welcome. Right. And I don't want that. I want yeah. everyone to feel welcome. And it's been a shock for me because I've been sheltered in the corporate world. <laughs> mm. Like, I've been in the corporate world. So I've been, I, I never realized how sheltered I was. And now that I'm in with, like, doing service and hospitality, yeah. like, I've really, in the beginning, I was scared, like, when I want a manager, I'd be like, can I help you? And like, they'd be like, ripping me apart. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so scared. Yeah. Now it's like, I hear something happening out there because people are miserable. Oh yeah. And uh, I'm like, and they take it out on like, those workers. Oh yeah. And I'm, I'm like out the door. Like some of my workers hold me back because they're like, if they're taking care of it, you don't need to do that. Because now I'm like. Let me out there. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, like before I was like, oh, I'm scared, you know, but now I'm like, I, I did build a tolerance and a confidence, mm -hmm. you know, and plus, you know, it, we are in downtown Scranton, so there have been like some, a little bit of things, you know, that I had didn't expect, you know, mm -hmm. being in the city. Well, yeah, because, uh, you know, you, you, anybody could walk through the door. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's like uh, the mm -hmm. great thing about retail or mm -hmm. that type of business and mm -hmm. also not the great, greatest yeah. thing because right. you, you deal with everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know about the homeless population. I mean, I was sheltered in, from North Pocono. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of homeless. And, you know, there's Yeah, a it's lot definitely of... an issue that people have been talking about a yeah. lot lately. Yeah. I don't think people realize... Yeah. And it's right yeah. on the outskirts of that, like, mm -hmm. the downtown area and yeah. stuff, too. You so, know, like, like, I have now, like, because I was in that world with um, people with autism and intellectual disabilities. So sure. we got, like, handouts that we have all, like, the social service departments. Mm -hmm. If somebody comes in and they need help, because people come in and be like, call 911, I need help, I don't have anywhere to go. Wow. So I have this paper now that I would give them and... You know, and I'm really fortunate because I'm part of the mall. Mm -hmm. So I have a team of security. So, like, we'll call them and, you know, and we try to help yeah. wherever we can. Which we didn't expect those kind of issues, but, you know, you get it everywhere. And it um, feels good sometimes yeah. being able to help them. Like, yeah. you, you, we would, ha like, stuff would happen that you would never expect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the end like overall feeling of that is we feel like we helped them yeah even if it was just a little yeah. and that's i think that's the right 
attitude, the compassionate way of mm-hmm. doing things instead of, oh my God, this is a nuisance. Get, get it out, out of get here. Out of and then like, right. it, yeah. you, you're, yeah. you're, you're just going to make it worse when you right. do stuff mm-hmm. like that. So yeah, that's definitely and, a way to, and, to take and it. And my owner feels that same sentiment, mm. you know, um, you know, helping the homeless and, sure. you know, being part of the city and building it up in every way possible. Yeah. You know, so like those are the, you know, little curveballs and, you know, learning hospitality and stuff like that. Um, so it's, it's been an experience. <laughs> 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 to say the least. Mm-hmm. And it's probably, uh, you know, uh, in- interesting working with family so directly too. you know, having family members on the staff and working mm-hmm. together and stuff, too. Uh, you know, because there's, there's uh, you know, I love my family. They also mm-hmm. drive me crazy sometimes, mm-hmm. too. So you probably have some of that, I'd mm-hmm. imagine, as well. Mm, not really. Uh, I, I, I do like having my son work with me. And actually, my other two sons help out as well. I have, you know, but I, I've gotten good workers. And if I have a good worker, I'm like, do you have a brother or sister at home? Okay. And we, so you want to bring in more we, Yeah, we, if you're family. good, I want to see if you're... <laughs> there's got to be another one of you at, out right. there. And so we do have some people that are related or they know somebody. And I, I just think it makes our team even better. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? It's not... Um, I think it has improved... And not everybody is related. But I, I don't see any negative about it. It's It's funny because we both work together in one office and he finishes things that I don't and I like just hand them over and one day I was like doing something to hand it to him to do it and mm. I look and when I he didn't grab it right away and I looked over and it was my other son Tanner and I was like you don't need that like I, looked away and I was like oh I'm sorry I didn't mean that but I just so used to like him you know being there and doing that next thing. so he almost finishes my sentences now so yeah mm-hmm. he was supposed to go to Williamsport he was um he was going to Pentec and, he, it, you know, he got into the program. He wanted to be in the program. And uh, Lynn Sandys wanted him to go to the program. And he decided to stay back. It, I didn't make him stay back. He had an epiphany one day in the It kitchen. was the middle of nowhere. I was just like, you know what? I'm going to Lackawanna and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the movie theater. And then once I said that, I was locked in. There was no, there was <laughs> right, no turn right. back right there. I locked myself in. <laughs> I was like, are you sure? Are you sure? And yeah. Yeah, so he did. And it's been a good decision so far? Oh, yeah. It's been yeah. great. I've, yeah. I've done stuff that I never thought, like, expect to do. Like, I'm, I'm paying for my tuition completely. I bought mm-hmm. myself a new car. It's amazing. Like, I, you would never expect I, I love it so much. <laughs> yeah. And I think he has a, a real future. Like, um, John has created a Vasiliga hospitality because mm. now that he has a few restaurants under his belt. Okay. So um, he's streamlining them. And, you know, so there's going to be, like, other future things that, you know, Ty can move on from there. It's not like he'll be at the movie theater forever. It's just, you know, for now. So I think, you know, there'll be other future things that he can do with his craft once he graduates and becomes a chef hmm. by name. So one of the things I wanted to touch on, and you, you mentioned it a little bit earlier, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure you get requests for movies and people are like, well, why don't you just play this or play that? It's not as simple as like oh. popping in a, a movie and stuff like that. So, you know, how how difficult and expensive is that? How How does that, you know... How's that whole process work to like maybe show a vintage movie or like a you know big popular movie that like isn't in theaters currently and I you know how do you do events and stuff like so that? So we're a first run movie theater and the mm-hmm. reason why we are because we thought about being a second run kind of like the way the D trick was. Sure. So we could do like film festivals and other things, but because of COVID and because of streaming, there's no no such thing. Mm. You have to be a first run movie theater if you're a movie theater because streaming happens so quickly. Well, yeah, everything just like within yeah. a couple of weeks, mm-hmm. maybe not even sometimes they, yeah. they, go, they go to streaming streaming happens so quickly. Like, um, what was that? Five Nights at Freddy? It was amazing. Like the crowds that were coming in for that, 
It was unbelievable. We were so thrilled. I bought merch because I, I did put in a gift house, a gift shop, and I have merch in there for like the movies and um, celebrity stuff. So I was getting all this merch and I was all excited because I didn't know what five, five Nights at Freddy's is. Mm. Like I'm learning this stuff as I go and I didn't know <laughs> it was so trendy. And I was like, why are all these people coming? And so I'm getting all ready and it re got released to streaming in like three weeks in. It wasn't and even. It was like, like the following week and yeah. then we were dead. And we were and dead I and like, I was like, it just came out. What do you like, mean? I yeah. have all this stuff coming. Like, yeah. you know, and that was the first one that ever did that. Mm. I didn't know what it was. It came so fast and went out so fast. But usually like they have like um, a three to ten week window okay. before they go to scream streaming and it depends on the studio so we have like contracts with all the studios um and then they basically tell us, us what to play yeah oh, okay. like it's hard to get one of those movies like a okay. vintage or a classic yeah we could try but it's expensive for us right okay so and like, we've tried we've tried yeah the vintage and the class they well, don't we did the wizard of oz for yeah. the 80th anniversary because it was released and i thought oh wow this is going to be great and it didn't it did okay but it didn't do so hot we did mm. a few classics around christmas they did okay like and i get that all the time are you going to play the classics and yeah, I tried a few, and like you, I'm gonna have them, but you gotta come. Like, right. you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, and, and Disney will not allow you to play their movies. Yeah, we can't oh, play. We any can't get any Disney, and they Jeez. and they bought out a lot of studios. So there's mm. studios that are Disney. Mm -hmm. So they will only release their own. Okay. So, so they, they'll do re-releases like mm -hmm. these. These studios, mm -hmm. well, may, mainly didn't Disney, right. they'll do a re-release and mm -hmm. they'll say, okay, you can play, play it, now, it now, but yeah. that's only for a two-week window and mm -hmm. it's very rare. They do oh, okay. not do it often. But mm -hmm. we could like, I can negotiate, like there's some, like sometimes people will come to me and they want a specific movie. I can then go to the studio and try to negotiate that movie. And it depends, like, if it's only a private viewing or if it's going to be public, then it, it'll depend on what the negotiation is. Okay. And I've done that for other things. So, And the percentages to the studios, they're quite high. It's hard. The reason why you're seeing more things in the movie theater and why we did the retail store is because... You don't really make a lot on the movie. Yeah. Nobody does, even the big chains. It's that's why people wonder why did I just spend thirty dollars on popcorn and soda? Because that's the only way the profit comes in to the sure the chain. And I, I the food that um you know the that trend now of uh, uh, the uh, popcorn buckets yeah. that seems to be like a big thing now lately with yes. these collector right. you know sort of things which. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, as as a lifelong comic book guy, mm -hmm. you really have to be. Whenever anyone says the word collector, mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to be think think about that that before right. you purchase. Like that is just because something says mm -hmm. collector's item does not mean it's actually going to be a collector's item. They made a million of them, mm -hmm. so you know it really depends on scarcity more than. And anything it's else, funny but... though because they sell out. Like I'm the independent yeah, guy, so the bigger chains get to get them first before I do. Okay. So. So, I mean, I'm getting them now, but I, you know, sometimes I do want things and I can't yeah. get them because they already sold out. Mm. They got to them first. So. And they're cool. They're yeah. cool. I don't know how long that yeah. will last before people like, I, I've got 20 of these things. But I don't know if I need another. Like, I got bucket, the you know? Wonka shirts. I got Wonka shirts and they're from a designer company and they and you have to, you know, become a wholesaler to have them. Yeah. And literally when it was released on that day, when I went to order them, it was a ticking. Like, I had to hurry up yeah. to order. And, of course, I only did the minimum. And, um, you know, I was nervous. Like, oh, my gosh, I got to get this order in because it was ticking away. Like, I was going to lose it, you know. <laughs> so, and that that is, they're numbered and they're collectible. Okay. And they're really nice. Um material are nice and everything yeah. but there's you know a few things like that and that's the whole thing with me having the gift shop i want to have those things so i get really mad when i can't get them sure know? yeah some of them i the, some of the items that are collectible mm -hmm. they're not <laughs> right but they're really cool yes. that's the thing yeah. people yes. will come knocking on our door when we're not open they're going to be like do you have this popcorn bucket and mm -hmm. i'm like i'm sorry we mm -hmm. don't mm -hmm. but like there we try and get as many actual 
collectible items in yeah. our gift shop mm-hmm. and like these are actually collectibles it's hard mm-hmm. for us to get well, even them. like taylor mm-hmm. swift i got nervous with the popcorn buckets because that was the first thing like was buying the popcorn buckets and the cups because everybody wanted them and so i bought like one case and i was nervous because you know I, I think everyone thinks like i have so much money but everybody has to understand that the movie theater has been there since 2016 and it's been renovated three or four times a right. lot of money went into it already. and it's still and we, those we, times. And, right. and yeah. we renovated again and we put the sign in and we have the posters in and there's a mm. lot that went into it sure. so it's not like i have an unlimited check yeah you know what i mean so when i we have to be careful what we spend and when i did the taylor swift buckets i bought one case and then they were selling and i was like okay now i can buy the second case mm. you know but then i was nervous about having so many would they sell you know sure yeah you don't want to be stuck with the you whole box of these them. things and yeah. i do see like people online are like selling them for 65 dollars now Jeez. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah hence why I was, yeah. the collector when you say that you know yeah. people go crazy and then yeah. they they go for these outrageous prices like ah, yeah. I mean, you might want to calm down to see if yeah. this is actually going to be a thing yeah. or not. Yeah. And it was really nice. Like Taylor Swift and um, Barbie was an amazing phenomenon. And it was so nice. People dressed up and came to the movies. Everybody was in pink. That's fun. Um, it was like girls night out all the time. And they were like concert ready. Yeah. <laughs> and it was amazing. And Taylor yeah. Swift too. Like all the little girls came in and they were with their sparkles, with their parents. And it was like, you know, it was so nice to see that. And they were dancing. We did get a couple complaints because people are like, I paid all this money to watch this movie and they're dancing. And I'm like, it's, it's a, concert. a concert. Right, like, yeah. It's a concert and like that's what she wanted because like the, our contracts were with her directly. Oh, okay. And she, and the way, in her, in her contracts, she was like, I want everybody to be able to move and dance. She wanted our, like the movie theater staff to see her movie together Mm. and to kind of have a like a party so that was kind of hard for the most part we didn't get many complaints everyone danced there might have been like one or two movies throughout all the movies that like people are like no i want them to sit i paid money i want to sit and watch this movie (laughs) but it's i don't know you know so it's yeah yeah but for the most part it was a lot of fun and I think too, you know, like we were saying before about how theaters have changed. I, mm-hmm. I think like when you do these event sort of things, mm-hmm. I think that kind of comes with the territory a little bit. Like if you're going to buy a ticket to something like that, mm-hmm. you should probably expect that it's going to be a, a little different than just yes. sitting, sitting quietly in the dark, dark and watching night. something. Yeah. You know, that's another thing I noticed. COVID changed people. Like people don't realize like that they're in a theater with <laughs> other people and they're not in their living room. Ah, uh, right, right, right. And it's people are phones, having a hard time. Right? They, people are having a hard time with that. Like, you're, there's other people in the room with you. Mm. And not everyone's going to be quiet. Sure. And you don't need to watch. Like, just watch your movie. So I think it's been a transition. I think people are getting better. But in the beginning, they were like, they wanted to be alone. Like, they mm. would come and be like, oh, that's that many people in the movie like <laughs> is there one where there's only a few people it's like you're at the movies <laughs> right yeah you know, you're, and i think it just you know everybody was home for so long mm, that right. it's been a transition but i see it growing more and more and people are coming in more and more and they're not afraid to sit in a theater with each other and you know we're not having that many issues but right. it's, been a, it's been a process and those you know those the summer blockbusters i'm sure will be the ones where people do kind of want that crowd you know right. you want to see like yeah, especially like, like go see a superhero a movie you want to be like yeah. cheer them on and by yeah. the end of the movie like that yeah. sort of thing yeah you know everybody talked about like uh you know end game and what an, uh you know avengers end game what an experience that was and i def i saw that my th- it wasn't as crazy as some of the ones i saw online but it mm-hmm. definitely adds something to mm-hmm. it where it's like you you know you've been building up for 10 years of mm-hmm. all these movies you you, here's the big climax and here's the big fight mm-hmm. scene at the end and it's like mm-hmm. you kind of want people around yeah. for that right. you know yeah. and like it, we're we're really missing out on that kind of stuff mm-hmm. uh with the way movies have been so it's nice to see that yeah. that kind of stuff yeah and i back. do see people going out again and you know and we have the bar and we have the food and we have the experience and their luxury seats their leather they're great we have the ptx which is premier theater experience it's like you know, the IMAX, Mm -hmm. Um, we have the bigger screen, we have the more surround sound, we have the laser projector, 
It's three dollars more. People are always like three dollars, <laughs> but um, we're yeah. lower price than most. For and sure. So um, you know, it's not that bad. But um, and you know, we we are now going to be putting in order at your seats. Mm. It's coming. Yes. I don't think it's going to be ready for the grand opening, but it'll be like a week or two after. Oh, nice. So you'll be able to have a QR code at your seat, mm -hmm. and you'll scan that yes, you use your phone, and um, you can pay right at your seat. It'll print in our kitchen and in our bar, and then we'll deliver to your seat, so you won't have to get up at all. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, now people order at the counter, and we have like 15 minutes, 20 minutes to get it into you um, before the lights completely go down, and... Um, you know, if anybody wants anything, they come out. Nobody really complains. Mm. Not many people. People, once they eat and they get settled in their seat, they don't really yeah. come out too much unless they have to, you know, run to the restroom and maybe they'll pick something up. But now they're going to have that opportunity to not go to the counter when they first come in. They could go to their seats and then they could order. So we're going to have nice. two different ways to do it. And you guys have an app, too. I wanted to make yeah. sure that we, we mentioned the app. I'll put the... the uh, Thing up on the, the screen there so you can uh, go on uh, android or iphone uh download the the app it's uh it has uh, show times uh way to purchase tickets uh coming soon attractions uh savings on pre pre-sale fees so uh, there's definitely some benefits there you should definitely uh download okay. the app if you haven't already um, and then you guys have, uh, well, before we get to the, the big event, let's, we'll talk about, we'll, we'll get into the, the, the subject that everybody's been, been <laughs> yeah. talking about lately. We talk about improvements to the theater. I guess that's a good segue in, in, into this. Oh. So just recently, the outside of the theater got like a, a kind of a major facelift. Uh, mm -hmm. you get the installation of this big bright marquee. Uh, then this week, uh, the city zoning board <clears throat> sent a letter to the owner of the theater, uh, John Blaseglia, uh, telling him that it's too bright, it had to be dimmed, and uh, turned off when the theater is closed. So what was your reaction to that? Uh, did you find out at kind of the same time everybody else did? Did you know about this in advance? Like, what, uh, what, what, what was your immediate re reaction to that? Um, I didn't know. My day started. The, there was notice in the building. It was already taken down before I got there. Nobody mentioned it to me in midday. I was working like any other day. Okay. I just got a text message that, you know, something happened with the city, with the theater. And I said, oh, no, is it bad? And they said, it's the um, marquee, but don't worry about it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and... Um, Mind you, we're there wondering, like, what what could this be about? Yeah. Like, we didn't know. Yeah, that's really strange. It's yeah. really broad. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, yeah. that could be anything. Yeah. I know. Yeah, so I really didn't know. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere... We saw a post on, on Facebook. Facebook. It was in Mark Diem, I told you. He, saw, he shared the letter, and that's when I read it mm, for the okay. first time. And I, and I think... It was like... Eleven o'clock at night too. Yeah, that it was. It. Like it was the, late. It was the end of the day, and I read it, and I thought, "Oh wow," I was like, the "Zoning, I don't understand." Because our owner John, he went and, like I said, it was custom made, and he had to do the plans, and he had to go to the city, and he went to the zoning boards, and he went before um, the historical committee to make sure that it aesthetically was good with the buildings. Mm -hmm. um, everything was approved. Everybody this was approved in. August. Let's just say that. <laughs> yeah, we got yeah. everything approved in August of last year. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, every he did all the steps that he had to do. So, you know, when I read it, I thought, ooh. And then the next day, it hit the news, the Times, and then that was it. It was like everybody was knocking down on my door, like, what's going on? And I'm like, geez, what is going on? We didn't, like, I didn't know. know. We yeah. had no clue what yeah. was happening. So then the mall manager, he called me and he said, turn the lights off when you leave tonight on the marquee because we have the ability to change colors. Mm. It comes, it's, we could have any color. Any color. We could have rainbow. It can move. It can strobe. Eventually the lights are going to be able to move. Um, it all is programmed mm. um, and it, the programming is still being worked on. Okay. And then we're going to be able to do it on um, an I on a, yeah, like an iPad. iPad. And, um, but now he can do it from the ceiling. And that's how we, you know, we have the timer. And so we tested colors. Maybe some colors were brighter than others. We do like the blue. It's softer. Mm -hmm. But we had green for St. Patrick's Day. And we could change it for the holidays. And um, we really didn't have any issues. Like, I didn't really get 
many I many complaints. The people that live across the street, they all frequent the movie theater and love it. Yeah. You know. And um, they think the sign is great. Yeah. I mean, hmm. one just said to me, are you going to turn it off at midnight? Are you going to turn it off? And um, even that was even in the beginning. And we weren't really sure what we were going to do. Um, mm -hmm. It so, was like the first week of it being up when we mm -hmm. were like, we didn't even think about like, we didn't even know when it turned off. Yeah. Because Let's just, of, we, yeah. Because in the know. beginning, until mm -hmm. we were trained, like we started to learn how to change the colors and all that. Um, so he said, maybe you should turn it off tonight when you leave. And I said, all right. So I did. And that was probably the earliest it was ever off. And then the next day, it was, don't turn it off at all. You don't need to turn it off. Okay. And so, um, and then, you know, I read about it and people started questioning me. And then I got nervous. I was like, <laughs> what should I do? Should I keep it on? Should I turn it off? Yeah. And so it was decided for me to turn it off at midnight. Mm. So right for right now, for, yeah. we have it noon mm. to midnight. Okay. And then we'll see what happens from there. But, you know, even in, and you can see it, it's on public. There's, it's on the public, right? When he went before a committee. Mm -hmm. um, it's out there. It's public records. It's public Anybody record. There's can a see video. It. Sure. There's yeah. a video of him presenting it to the committee. And the sign, you know, Billy was there with the sign company. And you can see how they discussed it. And um, that they gave him the go-ahead that it was the city. And, you know, if you, you know, it's the city lights. If you want to be in the dark, you know, we just be living in the country. You sure. Know? So... And yeah. I think it adds something to downtown. Like, obviously, I would drive by it. You know, my, the studio uh, that we're in right now is right around the corner. Uh, so, you know, if if I'm exiting here and, and go around the corner, I always saw it. And it was always, to me, uh, it looked nice. And as somebody who, you know, I, I didn't drive until I was in college. So I walked everywhere for the longest time. It was only play, the mall, you know, was still the mall at the mm -hmm. time. So it was still a place that a lot of people went to. So we always, you know, hang out at the mall, like mall rats and whatever. And, uh, you know, go to the movies, that sort of thing. And uh, I would have loved to have something that bright at night so that I could see. <laughs> because, you know, you would think downtown, like, uh, of course, uh, uh, you know, John has added a lot of lights to... Right. The mall. The mall did not used to look like right. that, especially yeah. the um, the bridge area there. Did not have all those lights before either. Yeah. So for years, that whole area was kind of dark, and yeah. you know, like you, you get a little nervous yes, walking home sometimes yeah. late at night, especially you're getting out of a movie late at night, something right. like that, or the mall right. was closing late, you know, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. You would get out, and it's like, oh, it's a little dark. So like having that, I think is is nice, you know. Yeah, it yeah. it's like a, it's a safety feature yeah. of the city, right? It's like, it's a good thing to have for people when they're walking alone and at night in <laughs> right. the dark by themselves. Yeah. Like, you don't want to be in the dark by yourself at night. Mm -hmm. That's just, it's creepy. Mm -hmm. And it, it adds, it has, it, it's aesthetically pleasing. And yes. like, it makes it feel like <laughs> right. kind of big city right. in a way. And it's like a movie theater. And we want people to know it's a movie theater. Right. That was one of the things I said to him when I took the job. Mm. Let, make, I want to make sure we have digital boards on the outside. You know it's a movie theater. Yep. And let's get a marquee. Like, and he was already in the works with that. They mm. were already, he already had intentions to do the marquee. Because I think that that was another thing that, you know, the building was missing was to know that it's a movie theater. Because in sure. the beginning, you have those grand openings, and then it fizzles. Yeah. And people forget, oh, yeah, that's a movie theater. Yeah. Like, but if you, it's in your face, and you see the that's movies that are coming. That's why we got big letters that say cinema on the <laughs> yeah. <side. laughs> yeah. And so they see it, they know it, they'll come in, they'll be like, oh, yeah, that's right. Because they're stopping at the red lights, they're looking at what movies we have. So yeah. it'll get them through the door. For so sure. that's kind of like, you know, why we did it, and... You know, and even with my events, I could put those posters out there. Mm -hmm. And eventually, maybe we'll sell advertisement. Yeah. You know? Well, I, you know, I, I definitely want to congratulate you guys because you found a way to get all of Northeastern Pennsylvania and the Internet to actually agree on one thing. <laughs> Everybody kind of seems to agree that this is kind of an overreaction on the city's part. And the lights really kind of brighten up downtown. So yeah, I, I feel like... It's probably going to be resolved faster than maybe it would have been mm -hmm. if this had not gone public. All the support has been crazy. It's yeah. overwhelming how many people are agreeing with us and they think that it's an amazing addition. Yes. 
because we believe it's an amazing addition. And to have all of this gratification from everybody mm -hmm. that it really lights everything up, it makes us feel good because yeah. it we did something right. Yes. Like, yeah. it's it's supposed to look like that. Yeah. Yep. And, and we know that the hashtags leave the lights on, John. <laughs> <laughs> it's going viral cool. and trending, yeah. and which is crazy. We were watching it. As I was at the the chamber last night event, <laughs> we were watching it trending, and um and one thing I could say about um, our owner, he is very grateful to all the positive support he's been getting. Yeah. People have been calling him nonstop and supporting him through the whole thing, and um, you know, he really does appreciate that. Well, the uh, I I I want to make sure that I say this, so I'll say it right to the camera. Please turn your outrage into action. Go buy a ticket, see a movie at Scranton Art House. If we want the city to do better, we need to lead by example and show that we support small businesses, even when they don't. And that I think is the takeaway that I get from this whole thing mm -hmm. is. Uh, I love, you know, I'm obviously I'm an internet guy. I have an internet publication <laughs> on the internet all the time. But uh, I also recognize I, I, that you can't live there and that you have to actually go out in the real world and do mm -hmm. things in, in real life. Mm -hmm. So it's all nice and good. People love their campaigns and they love standing up for things. Mm -hmm. But are you really standing up for things? Or are you just saying stuff on Facebook? So like, yeah. let's make sure that you actually come out and uh, support the local theater and, and, yeah. and come out. I mean, people should be going more to the movies in general. Mm -hmm. uh, if they like movies, they should be going out and seeing them in a theater and getting that experience. But also, um, you know, you guys being a small business as mm -hmm. well. I think that's, mm -hmm. you know, an important thing that, mm -hmm. that people need to understand. Mm -hmm. So you guys have your grand opening weekend is mm -hmm. going to be on Friday, April 5th through Sunday, April 7th. So uh, tell us what you guys have planned for all that. So at noon on Friday, we're going to have a ribbon cutting ceremony, and then we're going to have cake and cupcakes for the public all day. Um, hopefully we'll get, the we'll run out. That would be the thing. <laughs> yep. So a lot of people come and visit us, and uh, it's going to be $8 movies all weekend, no matter what time. Um, and, you know, all the popular movies are not limited to, um, you know, just one movie. It's all the movies. Okay. And, and we want, and we're gonna do First Friday, which you know we're the art house, so we're we want to be involved in First Friday. We've been doing that since the beginning, and so we're gonna have karaoke. We did it last week, last month, and it was great. Nice. Um, we're gonna have Talia Smith. She's gonna host it, which is Anshay Smith's um, sister. Oh, okay. Pick her up. Nice. So um, Talia can sing too. So she's going to host it because Pucker Up has a gig that night. So okay. she can't do it. <laughs> but Talia is going to be amazing. And we're going to do that. And then we also do like painting. We let people come in and um, get canvases and paint while we sing karaoke. It was fun. We it, like to have worked. people focus yeah. even on doing their own art. And people give us their art. They, yeah, they leave it, it behind wall. and we hang it up. And yeah. we show everybody it. Nice. Yeah, I have it in my office. Like people love. We have it at the bar. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. Really so nice. um, instead of having artists, we will have artists. You know how they usually do. But um, I mean, we just we figured we'd do that to be part of this grand. You know, the first Friday. Yeah. And then Saturday we're going to be eight dollar movies all day, and then we're going to be giving out free popcorn with a purchase, and we're going to have Jack Mead and the third. What is it? The third, what is the West Third Street Band, which I actually had them play at an event and they did jazz and it was amazing. Like it was just amazing. It fit the room, it fit the industrial style. Mm. Everybody loved it. There were kids, there are some kids that work for me that haven't seen live music that was like, that band was amazing. <laughs> like, can we see that again? And when they saw that we we're having it, they're like, oh, I hope I'm working that night. You know, so right. we're all excited. Jazz is not even my favorite, uh -huh. yeah. but in there and in that band, they sound incredible. Yeah, yes. we're really, really excited cool. to have them back. So that'll be seven to ten, and um, and then Sunday we're gonna have um, free hot dogs for um, with purchase, eight dollar movies, 
and then my brace is going to come in and he's going to do acoustic but he's also opening it to open mic if any musicians want to stop by and sing a song they can they're welcome they, you know i want the art house to not only be about movies but also to be about music and entertainment and art okay and that's kind of what i want to do i've been like i said i've been dabbling on little things here and there so you know we'll see what happens <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you about that because it's, um, you know, I know you guys definitely have a musical family. Yes. And, uh, but you also have this great space. I mean, you walk into uh, Scranton Art House, for those who haven't been there yet, it, it's, it's gorgeous inside. And there's this huge lobby area um, where, you know, kind of a lounge area and the restaurant part and all that kind of stuff before you even get to the theaters in the back. So there's a lot of potential there. Uh, to do things. And of course, you know, as everybody knows, and we talk about a lot on, on, on this show and in general, that uh, there's not a lot of venues. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not a lot of places to do mm -hmm. live music and entertainment, especially stuff that's for all ages. Right. Yeah. So you guys are maybe hoping to do some of that kind of stuff in the future? Yeah, yeah. We did one event and it was really well. And it was really good. It went to like you know, I only wanted it to midnight, but, you know, it was, we had, like, a bunch of bands, and it ended up going to, like, one thirty two in the morning, and we have to get up at 11 <laughs> to get the movie oh, started. Yeah, But yeah. it was fun, and we had a good time, and I want to dabble in that here and there, mm -hmm. um, but I think in the front entrance, acoustic music is better. Yeah. Than doing a full band, sure. I think maybe full bands in the in theaters. In the theaters with the, oh, that, that would be really that cool. Would work. Yeah. That, yeah. So we haven't done it yet, but we want to. And of course, my son Tanner can't wait to get in there <laughs> and play the drums in that room. So eventually, we're gonna try that. Like I said, I've been dabbling with little things here and there. Yeah. And you never know. You know, mm. we've got a lot of potential. Yeah, and that's you know that, that's it's cool that you have the freedom to be able to do that where uh -huh. you wouldn't have in another place. No, you know, like so yeah. that's really that's really yeah. fun. We did a pinball tournament, <laughs> and that, like, they brought yeah. in like six pinballs. Yeah, we, games. They brought six pinball machines, and they were live streaming, and I was like, I never <laughs> expected that. But we love transforming the place. Yeah, we love making it look like. Yeah. It wasn't supposed to be there. Yeah. Mm. And it's just this crazy thing mm -hmm. right when you walk in the door and you're like, what am I walking into? Like, then, we want yeah. people to react like yeah. that when they come yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, and we, we, soup, we try to decorate. Like, we decorate every holiday. Mm -hmm. And then we, I don't know, we got into this balloon art. So now that's <laughs> part of the theater. So we have balloons in the ceiling. And, um, so people come and they look at like all the amazing balloon art in the ceiling. It's kind of like just fills the room. So it become it like became our thing. thing. They come in, they're like, "Ooh, your balloons change." It was, it was so funny because last night at the chamber they had this big a balloon like um, photography thing, and mm -hmm. they were tearing it down. And they looked at me and they were like, "Do you want the balloons?" And I'm like. Sure. So I called him. I'm like, we got to get the balloons. This is where, like, the balloon This is radar. like 50 feet of balloon. Yeah. Like, oh, and called... we have two SUVs trying to fit it in there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Fighting them as but you're driving. It's funny because people will call us and they'll be like, I was just at a party and they were going to bust these balloons. Meet me at the front entrance. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So, like, people are, like, dropping balloons off to us and we put them in the ceiling. <laughs> So it's kind of so like, we're like repurposing them. Yeah, like yeah. we don't like we want them to go up there and last for a while. Yeah. Like you're not gonna use balloons for one event and throw them away. Yeah. We use them for months. Yeah, <laughs> we get love, our money out. Like of them. as soon as you Absolutely. walk in, people are like, "Wow, look at all these balloons!" You know, <laughs> and so I don't know where that came from. So I don't know Ooh, if my own. The likes middle it, of but nowhere. It's, yeah, it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> and it adds to it. So, yeah. And it was funny, the first Friday that we did the karaoke, the um, West Granton... Night Rhythms. No, the Night Rhythms. Yes. Yeah, they found out, and all the kids came, and they were all singing, and it was so much fun. It, and <laughs> I, they had a ball. Like, I think we had 39 people sign up at our first karaoke. Wow. And, you know, young and old, but it was nice to see the kids that they could go that know how to sing, that they had a place to go. Yeah, they felt like to, they had something like to do, do because yeah. there's not mm. a lot of things to do in Scranton. Yes. Like Scranton, it's not big, but 
like yeah. there's a there's a lot of stuff in Scranton, but there's not a lot of things for kids to do. Yeah, they right. were like calling me saying, yeah. like, do, do you have to be 21? And I'm like, no. And um, and it was funny because the group, they were such a good group of kids. Like even when older people came up, they were like clapping to the music and singing along. <laughs> so it was it was really nice. So hopefully it'll happen again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're you're right. There really isn't uh, enough for all ages to do, mm -hmm. so that's really fun. That's yeah. what we try and focus on. Mm -hmm. Everybody, not mm -hmm. like singling people out. We want mm -hmm. everybody to mm -hmm. come. Everybody to feel welcome. But like we even do, like I said, we do high end events too. I did a lot because I really decorated for Christmas. We had like four Christmas trees, <laughs> so it was really like super decorated. We didn't and even put the one up in our house, and we were decorating <laughs> five <laughs> yeah. at the theater. Yeah. So I. I we did have a lot of corporate parties. People okay. asked me and we like kind of closed, sectioned off mm -hmm. the bar and the seating area. And it was, and, and we piped Christmas music in and we had like afternoon Christmas parties and it was so nice because people, even though people came into the movies, they were like coming in going, what's going on? Like they, you feel like you're going someplace and like things are happening. Mm. You know, like when you go to Florida and you see all these things happening around you, you like you want to be there because maybe you're not part of that party, but it's like cool to see this party happening yep. while I'm going to the movies. <laughs> you feel like you're somewhere. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys been able to catch any of these movies? Are you actually have, able to watch I any of them? I have not watched one movie. <laughs> <laughs> I get bits and pieces of the movies. I watched Barbie when I went to Florida in January. We closed for four days. And okay. We ran out there for just a quick like holiday, and um, I watched Barbie there. But I did watch pieces of Barbie, and, and we have to learn about it. My staff does go and see them so that they know what the movie's about. Yeah, we really mm -hmm. encourage them, them to go to see go the some, movies yeah. because people ask about the movies, they they really need to be like well versed in them. Yeah. Absolutely. So like you would never expect your boss to be like, you need to go see this movie <laughs> right now. <Yeah. laughs> and right. you wouldn't believe the questions we get, like the people who call us about it. So you do really need to know mm. about the movies. We're well versed in them. We've mm -hmm. never watched any yeah. of them. No. I, no. I can't say <laughs> when I first started, my husband came because now I'm never home. And so he has to come see me there. So he was like, oh, this could be our Saturday night. And I was like, I can't sit in here. I have work to do. Like, I would never be able to rest in the recliner because I just think I have work at my desk, you know? Sure. Or, like, what's going on because I always want to know what's happening everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. But I, back in the day, I used to work at a Blockbuster, and it was the same sort of thing where people would come in and they want me to pick everything out for them. Mm -hmm. So then I kind of had to learn, like, uh, what – general audiences i should you know yeah. recommend this to you know, the general person that comes in this guy he's in horror movies i gotta make sure i recommend this to him that sort of thing you right. get to know your customers yes. after a while and then understand like okay you know uh this is this is going to be for you or mm -hmm. uh no put that back don't rent that you're going to hate it right. <laughs> it's a waste of money that sort of we thing so you probably regulars. get that too yeah, yeah. we, we never regulars. expected that we have regulars we have people that come every week sometimes every other day hmm. sometimes every day like to the movies okay which i would never have expected yeah you know and then they tell us what they like and what they don't like that's you awesome know? but people do ask us a lot um what they should you know watch especially when they have kids and stuff like that so we usually go by genre we're like what are you mm -hmm. feeling today yeah. like do you want some action do you want like historical Very fiction? Yeah. Like, what are you mm -hmm. feeling? Yeah. And then we go off from there because mm -hmm. okay. we just read a little snippet and we're like, okay, this one is going to be like about this. We need to know what yeah. actors are in which movies. Sure. So it's a lot of research. One day I want to watch a movie oh. there. And, one, and, and also like going back to the family thing, when I was prepping the theater to get it ready, and I was, the re, my broker that I had from Texas, it was actually the broker that they had before COVID was his grandmother. So oh, I had her number okay. and I called mm. in and it, and it was Jake. And he said, my, my grandmother, because I asked for his grandmother and he, she said, he said, my grandmother passed away from COVID. Are you oh, looking geez. for a broker? And I said, yes. And he mm. said, well, I took over her business. Mm. And so then I explained to him that I had no experience and I didn't know what I was doing. And I explained to him what kind of theater I had. And then he, 
And he, he said, said it was unheard of. Yeah, because he's his <laughs> really? grandmother. So his grandfather had a theater. His grandmother was a broker, okay. and then he took over for her. And then the person that comes to like fix our projectors, his father has a theater. And it's always in the family. And he's worked in it his wow. whole life. And everybody that we've touched with everything, they've all been in it generationally. Hmm. So, and the person that installed our equipment with the projectors and trained us said that it was the first theater he ever went to in his career that no one had family members that were in a theater or ever worked in a theater. Oh, that's interesting. So, it's a generational thing, which I yeah. didn't really even know that. Huh. Until and every again. part of it, really. Yeah. Every part, yeah. And every it's... part of it, yeah. Huh. He was like, "You didn't even like work at a concession stand, <laughs> popcorn." No. I'm like, "No." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it, so it is like a family business, believe it or not. Back in the day, the theaters, or even now, the theaters are you know family businesses. <laughs> so, so that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you were uh, carrying on that tradition. I'm carrying yeah. on that tradition. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. We should uh, we should check and see uh, we have any uh, comments here. Anybody want to uh, participate in the conversation? Now is the time. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them down below. We would love to uh, hear from you. Ah, our, uh, our good friend Seamus that we uh, see at the NEPA scene open mic very often said uh, Art House is a great addition to the community and he loves going there every week. So he's, well, here's, here's one of your regulars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Um, Nate asked if uh, you're going to have bands. So we did talk yes. about that. Yeah. Uh, you know, something that will be possible in the future. Uh, Seamus also mentioned the food is amazing. So, oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, ah, Rich, uh, Rich Drees at uh, Film Buff Online, great uh, local uh, film website. You should definitely check that out. So, in regards to the sign issue, uh, the reporting makes the ordinance sound vague. It it is it is pretty vague. I I, I would uh, agree with that. And, you know, is, is, how are they determining it's uh, too bright? Is there a, a zoning person out front with a light meter or something <laughs> like that? It's like, yeah, I, I don't know that either. Like that, that seemed really strange. What I guess what, what really I, I think is sticking in the craw of a lot of people uh, is like the letter was just so nasty. It was just like the way it yeah. was worded. It, it was just it, it was not it was not very nice to somebody who's obviously spent a lot of money in the city and is doing a, doing a lot, you know, to help the city. Yeah, whatever your opinion is there, I think is relevant. It's a matter of just like, you know, be decent to your neighbor, that sort of thing. It just kind of seemed a little little out of the blue with the, the letter. Uh, but it also was like, you know, why is this the thing you're going to complain about? Like, there's just so many problems in the city and we all hear about them all the time. We all have, have everything... But they were so quick with this one, you know, like this was just like, like you, you guys got that marquee up and, and right away, I've never seen the city act so fast on anything before. And I think that really bothers people too. It's like, well, you've had a pothole in front of city hall for 20 freaking years. You can't fix that, but you can, you, you can complain about the marquee. Like you got that, that letter was just right there at somebody's door right away. I mean, God, there's so much blight in the city, and then you, you 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 report it to the city, and it takes them a few weeks to come out and look at it, and whatever. Something like this that's nice, and it's like, oh man, you guys are right on top of that, though, right? And he could they they could have just called him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like there was no warning. Sure, it was. This yeah. is great. There wasn't like, can you? Dim it? Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, exactly. A simple like, question. Yeah, it's completely different. Can you dim it? Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, <laughs> Tanner says it's weird being on this side of the phone. <laughs> yeah, you're usually the one getting interviewed. Yeah. Um, let's see. Ola says, uh, super interesting. I've been eyeing it since we moved here recently. I'm so happy that it's, uh, that it's open. Uh, yeah. You should definitely check out uh, and, and come to the, I mean, the grand opening is probably like, if you're going to come out, that's the thing to come out to for sure. 
Um, Connie says, hi, cuz. Wish I could be there next weekend. You've done a fabulous job. Uh, uh, Mary says, uh, totally enjoyed the podcast. Thank you so much. Uh, love Scranton Art House and appreciate any PA scene. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> Mr. Turbo Snyder was like, I was the movie expert before all of this, yes. by the way. <laughs> he, was. he actually went to yes. the movies every Friday. He was the expert in watching them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he went to the movies every Friday. He had his seat in both Regal and Cinemark, and everybody yeah. knew his name. <laughs> <laughs> so he was like, you're doing what? You're going to work? You're going to GM a movie theater? You know, so... Now he doesn't go to the movies either. Yeah, he, he, he went to see Ghostbusters. Yeah, I still have... I'm a huge, huge yeah. Ghostbusters fan, and I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. So I definitely got to come out and check it out yeah. there. Um, so this the uh, Scranton, Art, uh, Scranton Art House o grand opening weekend be held uh, Friday, April 5th through Sunday, April 7th uh, with a ribbon cutting, $8 movies, live music, giveaways, raffles, food specials, and more. So you should go and definitely uh, support the venue, especially if you're one of those people that have been talking all, of, all week about the Scranton Art House and the marquee and the whole nine yards. Definitely uh, uh, come and show your support next uh, next weekend and uh, you should down, download the app as well the app is available on iPhone and Android and you can get show times and purchase tickets and uh, you know save money on uh, pre-sale fees and all that kind of stuff so definitely uh, download that as well uh, anything else you guys want to touch on before we get out of here I just want to say out of all the places you can buy our tickets our app is the most accurate there's a lot of things that been ha that's been happening recently okay. where there is movie times showing up on Google on Fandango mm. out of nowhere. <laughs> and I post the movie schedule. Mm. So I'm like, there was never that time of movie. So I don't know where you saw it. Yeah, It's always on Google or it's on Fandango. But our app is the most accurate thing and it's the lowest convenience fee. Yeah, so mm. use our app. Mm -hmm. If you want accurate times. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually we'll get into like memberships and all those yes, things. Yes, we are working on a rewards yeah. program. Yeah. Nice. And it'll probably be through the app. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys uh, coming on and uh, yeah. taking the time. I, I, you guys are very busy, so I'm glad I was able to pull you away from the theater for a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we will... I'll put the... Uh, banner up on there one more time that grand opening is april 5th through 7th so make sure that you uh come and uh, support a uh, small local business and uh we will see you here uh next wednesday for uh the next episode of the nepa scene podcast I greatly appreciate you guys tuning in if you enjoyed the show if you had a good time please like please share uh, leave a comment. Do all the great little algorithm things so that, uh, you know, the algorithm gods bless us with uh, lots of views and, and we can continue to bring uh, uh, many more of these uh, shows to you. So uh, hope you enjoyed this one and we'll try to do something a little different. We don't always do it on, on, on music, uh, but we'll be uh, we'll be we have another uh, local musician on next week. So make sure you tune in for that and uh, have a good night, everybody. <laughs>